Welcome back to Metroid Dread. We just defeated the experiment last time and got the screw attack, which we now have to carefully maneuver around that, uh, that, um, missile tank with. So getting up here when you're doing the gravity suit early and thus don't have the space jump is actually pretty tricky, but, uh, I'm not doing that route. However, oh boy, this is not good. Yep, it's double robot Chozo all the way. And this time they're both gold. Gonna try and change up my tactics a little bit here and focus a bit more on storm missiles. <sighs> Did I just seriously jump into one of their regular shots there when I had no reason to? Way. Get out of there. Ah, oh, that was a counter. Thinking that I really do need to go for more counters here. Oh, one's dead already? Good. Yeah, the, so that charge shot is no longer a one-shot, but you still don't want to get hit by it, obviously. Oh, nice! Okay, good, got both of them. Right, yeah, that, thankfully, is the last time we'll ever have to deal with Robot Chozo soldiers, and for that, I am very glad. Yeah, that, that cramped room version of that fight is not good, but at least the teleporter is right here. So, normally we go from the green teleportal straight through those blue, you can see them as uh, blue on the map there, the screw attack blocks, but I might have to take a bit of a detour to go and pick up that item that I missed earlier in Gavaran. Yeah, I believe, yep, screw attack blocks there. And here, we can just do this to get into here. And I actually need to go into these rooms right here. So what's my best path to that area? Right now, I'll break through that. Okay, we can get in there. I don't know if it's even possible, because this is like how you're supposed to get out of the area with that item. Rather than get in. But if we break through there... Break that... Get in here... Okay, we can break through there. Get in here. And enter this room. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever done that before. <laughs> That's a very weird way of getting into this room. You, you're kind of supposed to get through that area after you've picked up this. And again, I still wonder if this is even required. I feel like it's not, but a lot of wikis say that all of the main uh, items are required. But I don't know, I don't see how they can gate you off from getting this though. This is the Pulse Radar. This is something that I honestly feel they should have given to you a lot earlier. Because it probably would have solved the issue that some people have with the room. What you do here is with full Aeon, you hold a right on the D-pad to emit a special wave that lets you see which blocks nearby are destructible. It doesn't tell you what type of destructible block they are, though. So they might be bomb blocks, they might be uh, fall-throughs, uh, they, they could be anything, really. But it can help uh, when you're, you know, searching for the last few items that you need and um, they uncover, uh, you know, a block that you may have missed earlier. 
Okay, yeah, that's just energy, that's not health. I can crash through there. I can pull this open. And get in here. Also, hi there. <laughs> I no longer need to bother with the counter on those guys. And here might be a good idea to use this save room. Just saying. There may or may not be something coming up. Because, yeah. Some people have said that Dairon is the only area in this game without a boss. And, well, yep, as you can see, there is a boss door here. So Gavaran has a boss, and we're about to meet it. See, that door is blocked, so our only choice is to head down here. Huh. It's just a random enemy. Okay. Well, it's a bigger enemy. We've encountered these before, but we haven't really directly fought them. You just have to hit them from behind. But still, it's just a regular enemy. How bad could it be? Okay, now in this phase, you can actually get a Shine Spark in. And I didn't quite get it, okay. So yeah, this is Golzuna, and everything it does one-shots you. Uh, in 0%, so yeah. And this attack right here, uh, we, we first had Flappy Bird, and now we have Ball Man. Here, I just like to run around it. And I uh, Flash Shift. So Flash Shift is the name of the game in, uh, at this point. So this whole fight is basically a test to remind you that even with the Space Jump, you still need to remember you have Flash Shift. If you try and Space Jump over him, he will pin you in the corner and just repeatedly hit you until you die. So you actually have to use the Flash Shift in this fight. And yeah, here, I like to wait before flash shifting, hold your ground until the last possible moments, to quote a movie that a lot of people think is terrible, but I thought was okay as a kid. Uh, but yeah, because if you make him ram into the wall, then, uh, then he will just straight up stop in place for a few moments, and you'll get some free shots on him. But if you, if you wait, uh, if you flash shift too early, then he won't ram the wall, and you won't get the opportunity to damage him a lot. But yeah, those explosions in 1%, they are a one-shot. Every single thing this guy does is a one-shot. Running into him is a one-shot, getting hit by his attacks is a one-shot, getting ran into the wall is a one-shot, yeah. So this is also another fight where, in a normal playthrough, the Storm Missiles are really, really good here. Yeah, you can try them here, but you don't- not only do you not have a lot of them, but also, um, there's the simple fact that, uh, you only have a limited number of, uh, seconds before he starts going back into one-shot mode. That looks like a homing bomb. Be careful, Samus. Oh yeah, almost kind of got me there. Oh, there we go. Okay, he's gone into Corex form. So you can Storm Missile the core as well. In fact, I think you can even Screw Attack it, but yeah. This boss, uh, apparently you can fight this boss early too. I've never tried that. But wow, that core went down quickly. And he gives you a new power-up that I think is pretty cool, honestly, and it's kind of a shame you don't get it until this late, in the normal sequence at least. You can sequence break for this, but I've never really personally done it before. Uh, yeah, this you have to hold down the R button and press uh, Y, and there's a few applications of this that the tutorial doesn't really fully explain to you, and that is that if you set a cross bomb, uh... Yeah, uh, the cross bomb will also like super boost you up in the air, but if you set a cross bomb and then start moving horror- uh, wait a minute. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah, if you s you have to set a cross bomb and then start moving horizontally, and it will boost you horizontally uh, sideways. And this is is the only way you can get over gaps like this. So you have to actually start moving before the bomb goes off, just a little bit before the bomb goes off like that, before the explosion will propel you. 
Yeah, see, like, you gotta do it like that. And there's a few, um, a few missile tanks that you can only get that way. Yeah, it's gotta be not too early and not too late. And here, you have to screw attack over that, and then break that, which will let you get through here. Uh, that was, like, one way. I'll, I'll open up that other one-way path, too. And this is gonna lead us into... Actually a new area, and as you can see, this is where our ship is. We are well and truly in the end game now. Yeah, we are approaching the final stretch. So as I've said before, this is a relatively short game, but it is one you're encouraged to replay. This is Hanubia. From, uh, and as you can see there, yep, we've got a couple of Choto soldiers already. From the, uh, from the art that you unlock by, um, by getting 100% in this area, which is very easy to do since it has very little items in it, it's, it's quite a short area. This seems to be the Morkin tribe's main military stronghold, or even their barracks. So, as usual, we have to blow up the planet, like, pff, yeah. Raven Beak's search for Metroid DNA poses a threat to the galaxy. You will never give up. The odds are still not in your favor, but you must end things here. Well, we did promise Quiet Road we'd end this once and for all. I am searching for his location. Return here later for an update. Okay, then. That's a little weird. We're normally not told to return to uh, a navigation room we've already visited. Oh, I can just screw, screw attack you like that. Even if you take a little bit of damage, you don't need to worry because you'll get healed. Okay, and here, yeah, you're kind of expected to be able to uh, cross bomb through things. Cross bombs can also let you attack enemies like that, sort of horizontally from you. However, we are stopped by a new type of door. So again, why am I even bothering? I can just screw attack. So our trip into Hanubia is actually going to be very, very short-lived. We have here... Yeah, we can... Oh, no, not you. Uh, yeah, I believe... Yeah, you can screw attack them, though, and two screw attacks will will uh, finish them. However, uh, yeah, that way is actually not the right path forward. We can do that. That's still always fun to do. <laughs> yeah, see, I feel like this, this power-up had a lot of potential if only you got it earlier. Oh, there we go, okay. This might actually be tricky. I did save, though, in that command room. Okay. There we go, good. Always annoying when you have to dodge missile tanks like that. It's still nowhere near as bad as something that happens later on in... Uh, in... Well, not later on, kind of mid-game in Metroid Fusion, where there's this very large uh, segment where the power goes out and you have to run through a long area with no save points, and uh, not only is there uh, a whole gauntlet of space pirates in your way, and a somewhat difficult boss at the end of that gauntlet before you get the chance to turn the save points back on, but there is an energy tank that you have to do a very, very precise jump over in that sequence. And also, after you've beaten the boss, right just in the one room between the boss and the next save point, which is why I'm so glad for the pre-boss and post-boss checkpoints in uh, Dread. Right after you beat the boss, there is a tiny bit of stretch between you and the next save point, and there are key hunters there, and if they have their stingers out and they hit you, they one-shot you. So that's a huge pain. And yeah, we're just supposed to kind of fall down here. Hi there, Zombie Chozo. I do not care about you anymore. Speaking of things I don't care about anymore, I don't care about cold rooms anymore. 
Okay, look, looks like screw attacking doesn't make you immune to the explosives. I don't know what type of recharge this is. Looks like a... No, it is an energy one. Kind of could have been any of them. I noticed there's like a schematic for a weapon in the background there, or even a ship. I didn't notice that before. Okay, now that's screw attack. So this is an area of um, Ferenia. You can actually enter early if you go the early gravity suit route, but it's not the direction you're really supposed to go at this point. And I, th I do believe there's actually a little more here. Yes, there is. So yeah, we go up here now. Also, high saw blades. I think these are like a new variant of the annoying insects from earlier, except these things we have to screw attack, so they're really no threat at all. There is a semi tricky screw, ah, uh, not screw attack, um, semi tricky shine spark puzzle in this room, I actually remember. Yes, all of you I do not care about at all because I now have the screw attack. Yeah, this is that point uh, in a Metro game where you tend to just feel really powerful. Yeah, I had a feeling those were screw attack blocks. Except we have to not break all of them because we need to be able to storm missile this. So we can get through that and then... Okay. Also, hi there. Again, I don't need to worry about you anymore. I have the screw attack. However... Yeah, feeling powerful about that. Well, as it turns out, we still need to defeat this sixth Emmy. So... Oop. It's already in here, I believe. Yep, it's right there. And we do have the space jump and the screw attack and the gravity suit, so running from it is going to be a little easier than most enemies. But it's still going to make us work for, uh, work for the kill in more ways than one, as you'll soon see. So we are already at the central unit here. So fun fact about this central unit. You can shine spark it to instantly get rid of its protective casing. However, screw attack already does that. So it's not really that necessary, but yeah. After that annoying robot Chozo fight, I'm kind of content with just cheesing this one. I kind of found a video on YouTube on shine sparks on bosses and I saw this one and I wanted to show it off. But yeah, you don't need to because the screw attack will also break its protective plating. However, this Emmy kill segment is actually kind of special and I really like it for doing this. This almost feels like your final exam on dealing with Emmys. Because we actually have to go through an obstacle course before we even get the chance to shoot this next enemy. Like, as you can see, it, it's nowhere near us right now. So now we have to break through here, go through a bomb door, and yeah, you'll just see right now why I love this segment. So we have to blow through those, bomb that, wide beam box. This one requires the diffusion beam to get through. This one requires some shots or bombing through, shoot that, slide here, we have to, uh, like, um, do that. And now, and only now, do we have a decent chance to get a shot on this thing. That we kind of, uh, you can actually start shooting this one early, though. You don't have to go through the entire obstacle course, but, um, I like to anyway. And there we go. So yeah, I, I, again, I, I love that. For the last Emmy, they actually make you work for it. It's not quite the same as uh, many of the other encounters where you get an opportunity to shoot the Emmy immediately. You sort of have to find a good spot, and again, requires you to run through an obstacle course. It's just, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. Though first time I played, I did, I did die a few times there. But that Emmy, which I like to call Warner Brothers, uh, I don't know if I said that before, get you the Wave Beam. It's kind of interesting how the Wave Beam has increasingly become a late game ability in Metroid. Back in, like, in Super and in Prime, it was an early game ability, but uh, I guess the ability to shoot through walls in a game like this is considered very good. So yeah, basically all it does is uh, uh, you can just shoot through walls and um, yeah, that's basically it. You can shoot through walls. Uh, I think it's a little stronger than the Plasma Beam is, too. 
But, uh, and it also opens up these, uh, purple shields. And you're here. This is like a demonstration. So you have that thing there, which is going to be a pain if you don't deal with it from over the wall. And then you can shoot that from over the wall. Then we can go back here and hit a save point. And yeah, that was our quick dip back into Ferenia to fully clear out the area. I, yeah, don't care. Wave beam that open. And now... Now we're gonna finally go back into... Hanubia. Because this is our real trek through the Hanubia area. So our destination now? Yeah, nowhere to go but that wave beam cover. Also, I believe here... I'm just gonna get rid of you because why not? This is pretty much your, your introduction to just just cheating things with the wide beam, with the wave beam, I mean. It's not really necessary, but it's kind of fun. Yeah, especially unnecessary now that you have the screw attack. Hello there. Yeah, I see you. We'll be dealing with you in a little bit. But first... Hi there, moment killer! Yeah, we'll talk about the implications of what just happened there later, because for now, we have to fight another Morkin soldier. So here, I like to stay kind of close. We can't Shine Spark the shield this time, but he does have uh, a, a counter-attack that if I get it, will instantly break the shield. But if he puts the shield away before attacking, it means he's going to do something else. There's the counter. Okay, there we go. So yeah, if we, if we do that, it instantly breaks the shield. Now I just need to wait until he... Yep, he's turned into an abomination. He's doing the long lance lunges now. I feel like this room's a little shorter than the majority of ones where you fight uh, infected soldiers. Okay, yeah. Sometimes he can do that three times. Oh, yeah, he faked me out there. I thought he was going to do Hydro Pump. Faked me out twice. Yeah, that was going to go all the way across the room.
So that actually looks cooler if you have more energy tanks and missiles and you took damage and used missiles during that fight because when Samus does that thing that she does to him, she regains all of her energy and missiles. So yeah, this is one case where playing 1% actually ruins a little bit of the narrative a bit because it's really cool seeing that effect. But we also get the power bomb, which is, speaking of which, something that 1% does actually affect. Because there are power bomb tanks in this game that give you more ammo for this, and we can't get any of them. So yeah, power bombs, pretty much your ultimate ability, they blow up basically everything on the screen. But yeah, what just happened? Well, this has actually been foreshadowed through most of the game by the fact that, um... By the fact that Samus has always been absorbing uh, from the Emmys, like the power-ups, once she destroys them. And this will refill both energy and ammo. But yeah. The series title is taking on a new meaning now. Back into the Emmy zone, not like it's a threat at all at this point. And this kind of area, if you've played Metroid, uh, like Super Metroid, you'll probably know that these kind of tanks you're sort of supposed to power bomb. But yeah, we're only going to have two for basically the entire game. Well, what's left of it at least, because there's not a lot. But power bombs are actually important in the final boss fight. So that's actually kind of interesting. So only having a, uh, having two of them will actually impact us there. I believe, yeah, that's a power bomb, uh, power bomb floor. And here, this is actually like one of my favorite uh, optional items in the game, because there's a whole lot of stuff down here that um, basically if you don't power bomb the floor here, you can actually just easily speed boost and get this now. But if you do power bomb, like get trigger happy and power bomb that floor, then actually getting the item in here is a lot harder. You'll you'll need to do a roundabout route that involves uh, speed boosting here, going through there and keeping the charge up until there. Uh, again, like, it's not impossible, but it is much harder. Samus, you have manifested a new power. The speed with which you siphon energy is undoubtedly Metroid in nature. The Metroid DNA inside you must have fully awakened, no doubt as a result of the many battles you have fought on this mission. It's almost as if someone wanted us to fight many battles here. This tremendous power is the last thing you require to confront Raven Beat. I thought you said before that we shouldn't be able to confront him because we stand no chance. I have detected a fortress in the sky high above Nubia. He must be there. The time has come. Samus, fulfill your destiny. Uh, Adam, you okay there? Oh, so, yeah, yet another feature that uh, only the loading screen tips tell you. Yeah, this is, as I said before, this game loading quickly kind of works against it, because a lot of the useful information you find on loading screen tips uh, you don't get to see for very long, and some of it is stuff that isn't told to you in the tutorial, so I kind of wish there was some kind of, like, you know, menu where you could view that. But anyway, here I'm going to have to use these to refill power bombs, because we're going to need to use them in a few moments. This is yet another thing that should be bringing up alarm bells to anybody who's played uh, Super Metroid. It's always like a thing with this series, always power bomb tubes. Now, uh, here's actually something kind of interesting. Well, not yet, but... Oh, wait, no. Uh, no, no. I can just screw attack you. Thought I had to counter you, but no, I don't need to do that anymore. So I believe, firstly, I screw attack you. Yeah. Speed booster blocks here. Remember that. It may not be relevant now, but it might be relevant a little later. And again, I gotta remember I have screw attack. So right now, there's really not much of the game left to go. I should probably replenish my power bombs. Not that I'll need them for what's coming up. There is one obstacle in our path before Ravenbeak, and he is right there, bouncing off of those ships. The last Chozo Warrior. 
Okay, so this guy is a little different than your average uh, Chozo soldier, but we will have to wait until he does the counter before we can uh, tell that. And he usually, yeah, he usually doesn't do that. He might do it now? No, he's jumping again, okay. Is he gonna do it now? There it is, okay. So you have to counter and then pull the shield off with the grapple beam, which is really cool, and the shield actually glows with the same aura as grapple points. So that's a nice reward for noticing that. Lance lunge. Yeah, I knew you'd jump there. Jumping again, okay. Oh, well, I, <laughs> okay. That was weird. I was just like, Oop, dodge, dodge, dodge. Didn't realize what he was doing there. I kind of panicked when he phase shifted. Okay. Okay, did not Hydro Pump three times, okay. Don't even know if I should be Charge Beaming here, whoop! Ooh! Please don't go to the wall again. Okay, good. I can get a lot of hits in on you if you keep doing that. Center, right. Center again. And after all that, it is so satisfying to have Samus just absorb that guy. <laughs> yeah, that was 20 minutes worth of outtakes, and that wasn't even the final boss, oh boy. Oh, yep. Hop right into that. Oh, ac oh the gravity suit means that's no longer a one-shot, interesting. Of course, yeah, that was still terrible. Oh, yeah, see, yeah, that's the lingering hitbox of that. I was hoping you would do the blue blade. And that will still kill you if you've taken damage earlier. Oh. And there's really, really little room to maneuver here as well. <sighs> Speaking of which... Oh, yeah, nice job leading your shot there. Mm. Didn't quite get out of the way in time. No, that's gonna... Oh, just barely didn't actually get me there. Oh, didn't quite jump over him. But uh, now I'm completely out of missile. Uh, really? Just hit one of their shots, and you were just faking me out by standing there. I mean, this fight is technically completely skippable, but, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a challenge run if we didn't actually do all of the fights that we possibly could. Oh, yeah, that guy. I just knew that guy was going to point blank me in the face. Okay, this is a terrible place to be in. Never, ever go down the bottom part where, like, they'll both just trap you, and that's really, really terrible. I'm, yeah, I'm dead. I knew it. I think I actually wasted a lot of these storm missiles there because I was facing the wrong way, and a few of them ended up going backwards and hitting the door. Oh, oh wow, barely just dodged that. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jumped, countered, and then ended up going into him. Ugh. Yeah, so a lot of their attacks don't quite one-shot you anymore, thanks to the gravity suit, but you can still only afford to take two hits at most from a lot of their attacks. So, still, you can't really get greedy here. Especially if you think that they're going to do a counterable attack, and they instead go for the uncounterable version. Oh, that... too, too early. Way too early. Yeah, you really, really don't want to get trapped down there. That was, yeah, that's, it's always a mistake ending up in that part of the room. Because a lot of people have said that Dairon is the only area in the game without a boss, uh, and uh, we have not encountered a boss in Gavaran yet. Those tongues immune to the screw attack or something? And 
Okay, I didn't realize that was a one-shot. I've never got hit by that before. Good thing I used the save room. Yeah, only charge shots and missiles work on the shield. But once the shield's down, any kind of shot works. I feel like my game's actually lagging slightly. Maybe because of all those cutscenes and stuff, I'll probably have to take a break soon. Yeah, here. They... Oh, not quite quick enough. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, that's why I don't like to space jump, by the way, because they can quite easily jump through you like that. And he's turned into an abomination. Right. That means longer range uh, lance lunges. And also this. Oh, not fast enough. Yeah, so this attack is incredibly annoying, because it one-shots you in low percent, and he does it up to, yeah, multiple times. But if he puts the shield away before attacking, it means he's going to, well, not do the counter. Or you could just walk right into his shield and die for some reason. Okay, so here I like to stay close. We can't shine spark the shield off this time, but he does have a counter that will instantly break the shield if we get it, and that's the... And I missed the counter, yeah. Okay, so when you counter, you then have to grapple his shield off. So yeah, this is that one combat application of the grapple beam that I talked about uh, way earlier, back when we fought, uh, you know, what's his name, uh, Drogiga. But yeah, uh, speaking of which though, people actually inform me of a different combat application of the grapple beam. Those crystal enemies uh, that I really hate, you can actually pull their... Um, Shielding off. Yeah, that does reach you when you're on the wall. Ah, yeah, too slow. Oh, ah, yeah, wasn't close enough. Oh, whoa. Oh, that was wow. I have no idea how I dodged that one. Oh, that's why I don't like jumping, because they do that, they jump through you. The shield works a bit interestingly here, not like... Okay then. Really? He went all the way to that to the corner? Nope, going to the center. Did I seriously just short hop right into that? Really? That wasn't fast enough. Oh, wow, that spear still has a hitbox in that state. Spear lunge. Hydra- ah, Yep, that wasn't fast enough. Would you please stop jumping straight to the corner? I hate it when you do that. Would you please stop doing everything? I hate it when you do that. That's basically how you sum up this boss. Oh, he course corrected that. I dodged too early. Oh, that was insanely close. He was just barely under me in the air there. Oh, yep, yeah, he's doing it three times. Nope, he did not go for four, though. Oh, really? I was just in the wave? See, this is why I hate these guys. There are actually, like, three different things they can do when they're on the wall, and you have to be ready to react to any of them very quickly. Oh, really? Really? 